Next, we'll move on to continent ocean convergence. In continent ocean convergence, the same kind of process as we see in ocean ocean convergence, except that yeah, the other plate is continents. So here also there is meta subduction zone and then there is metamorphosis and we see light volcanic eruptions. But here the mountain formation is not due to volcanic eruptions, but there is a different process like the formation of Rockies and Andes. And here the plates involved are the Nazca plate in case of Andes and the South American plate, which are interacting and moving towards each other. And in the other case, we have the interaction of Pacific plate and North American plate. And also there is a minor plate which is called as John D. Shuka plate to the north. And there are other plates like Cocos plate to the south. So all these plates interaction has created these kind of mountains. So the mountain for formation is that we have a trench like we have in the other case. That is we can see the trenching. But the trenches here are not as deep as we have seen in other case. Uh, that is during ocean ocean convergence. But still trenching is significant. But here the mountain formation is due to upthrust of continental landmass. So what what is this upthrust? Let us see. Let us imagine that this is a oceanic plate and then this is a continental plate. And the oceanic plate is moving towards the continental plate and in that scenario it subducts below the continental plate. And when it subducts continental plate just doesn't stay in its place but it upthrusts or moves onto the top of continental plate. And this movement creates upliftment of sediments or whatever that is present in this uh, landform. And these sediments due to compression undergo folding. We know that this is folding. This wavy like structure is called as folding. And this, this is called as syncline and the other one is called as anti-syncline. So this bend, uh, upward and downward bends are called as syncline and anti-syncline. Also I have given in detail about this in my, in my notes. So in this way there is formation of Andes and Rockies. So next moving on to continent continent convergence. The first important uh, example is Ural Mountains. In the formation of Ural Mountains just like in the form of oceanic ocean convergence here also we have thrusting but the thrusting is less significant because of the two plates being of uh, more or less same equal densities. So when there are equal uh, equal in density usually instead of thrusting usually plates don't thrust much or they don't, don't go deep much but there is up thrusting. Sorry, uh, instead of trenching, there is upthrusting. So there is little trenching. And like in the other examples, there is also upthrusting, which leads to formation of fold mountains. The best example is Ural Mountains, which is formed due to the interaction between Kazakhstan uh, minor plate and the Eurasian major plate. So this is Ural Mountains. All this part is part of Eurasian major plate. And the parts of Kazakhstan and some parts of Ukraine, etc., are all part of Kazakhstania minor plate. So the interaction between these two plates gave, gave rise to Ural Mountains. And now let us move to very important concept: the formation of Himalayas. So the formation of Himalayas is a little different from the formation of Ural Mountains in such a way that in the formation of Himalayas we have uh, one important concept called as geosyncline. So geosyncline is nothing but a broad depression which is a part of oceanic crust which is between two continental crusts. For example, this is Indian plate. This is an example for continental plate. Also Indian plate is a, is, is a part of Indo-Australian a plate which is a majority oceanic plate but still beca because the, the here interaction here is between continents we will take com consider it as a continental plate. And the other plate is Asian plate. This is a continental plate. But the Indian plate having some significant amount of oceanic landform is much denser. As a result, the trenching is carried on by Indian plate. But before that, we will see about geosyncline. One important point is the Himalayan rivers, namely Ganga, Brahmaputra or many other rivers, ancient rivers which are now extinct, were all rivers which are present much before the formation of Himalayas. That is, they were flowing much before the formation of Himalayas itself. So they are much older rivers. So when they were flowing, they brought lot of sediments and deposited in this depression or geosyncline called as Thetis geosyncline. So we have seen about Thetis C when studying about continental drift theory. So this is what is Thetis geosyncline. So this part is Thetis geosyncline. So this deposition gave us a lot, lot of sediments in this geosyncline. And when the Indian plate started moving towards <coughs> the Eurasian plate, these sediments got compressed and folded giving rise to the formation of Himalayas. 
and the ones which were at the very border of Eurasian plate got compressed to a very great extent giving rise to higher Himalayas which were the biggest uh, the highest peaks are Everest, Kanchenjunga etc you can see these are higher Himalayas that is in the initial stage of formation and there was volcanic activity but all this volcanic activity is under the sediments which are covered which have uh, totally covered up this volcanic activity so for now we have in this part we have Tibetan Plateau which is now a part of both volcanic as well as uh, sedimental depositions but thing is it has been so many years that we don't find much of volcanic activity but we have only well settled sediment formation so this is how finally Himalayas took shape so there was more movement towards Eurasian plate the trenching is not so significant because the interaction is between two continental plates which are mostly of uh, significant uh, significantly equal densities as a result here also there is upthrusting of Eurasian plate and there is little trenching by Indian plate so this upthrusting has given rise to rising up of geosyncline sediments which were folded and deformed giving rise to Himalayas so the first Im highest ranges are Himachal sorry Himadri which are also called as higher Himalayas then we have Himachal or lesser Himalayas and then we have Shivaliks which are least in height and Shivaliks are mainly formed not due to folding but due to deposition of uh, silt that is brought from higher and uh, middle Himalayas so we can see the major ones are higher Himalayas and then Himachal which are mainly formed due to this kind of interaction so the last important interaction is continent island interaction this is very similar to ocean ocean interaction except that one plate here is oceanic plate other one is continental plate but here as the continental plate is not so denser it doesn't plunge deeper giving rise to a small not a so significant trenching but it creates island arcs that is the oceanic eruption, eruptions which later consolidate into huge continental landmass for example this in this red line what we see is, is an example for island arcs which are formed due to interaction between continental plate that is australian continental plate and some parts of pacific plate so as Australian pl plate started pushing against the oceanic uh, uh, oceanic plate that is uh, Pacific Oceanic plate there was a formation of island arc and this pressure created a trench on the other side whereas the continental shelf which was moving towards uh, the New Guinea islands gave rise to much bigger landform so this is all part of continental shelf which later consolidated into continent so this is how New Guinea islands were formed from continent island uh, interaction so these are various important mountain ranges all across the world so I'll, I'll uh, create separate videos on important locations when we study about world geography so for lesser confusion or to not to have more confusion I have not included about location based questions in these uh, slides but this is one very important map so just uh, remember this map so Mount Aconcagua is the highest in Andes it is a part of it is in Chile the borders of Argentina and Chile you can see compare the heights and with this one more important fact is there is one highest volcanic mountain is present in Andes it is called Ojos del Salado which is also a part of Andes mountain system which is very close to Aconcagua this is an important fact along with this you can also remember one more fact which is about the highest volcanic mountain in the solar system it is called as Olympus, Olympus Mons on Mars so these are two important facts so if we look at important highest ranges or the highest ranges of each continent so Winson is the highest range in Antarctica and then Kilimanjaro with this we also have Mount Kenya which is significantly of the same height but few meters less uh, higher compared to Kilimanjaro and in Australian continent we have Punak Java Jaya which is a part of New Guinea Islands which is part of uh, <coughs> Australian continent actually but when it comes to country it is a part of Indonesia so this part the left of this line is a part of Indonesian islands so this Punak Jaya mountain is in Indonesia which is a part of Australian continent so this island of Indonesia is not part of Asian continent it's part of Australian continent but in mainland Australia the highest mountain is Kosciuszko so you can see whatever may be the pronunciation but still you should remember these things and then Everest Everest is one important range in Caucasus that is Caucasus mountains in southern Russia 
so we can consider this as the highest mountain in Europe because this part of Russia is a part of Europe and then we have important one Mount Black near volcanic islands uh, mountains like Mount Vesuvius etc Mount Vesuvius is known as lighthouse of Mediterranean so Mount Blanc is very close to this mountain this volcanic mountain and then in, Ala in North America we have Mount McKinley which is part of Alaska which is it is also of greater height about 6000 meters so you can roughly remember these heights also sometimes they might be important for prelims and then let us look at the tectonic plates and their interactions as a quick recap so the formation of Caribbean islands is mainly due to the interaction between South American plate and then eastward push e northeastward push of Nazca and Cocos plate putting stress on the Caribbean plate which gave rise to island arc of Caribbean islands and then we have the Madagascar Islands. Madagascar, Madagascar Island is a different island. It was actually a part of Africa which got separated due to tectonic movements. So it is not a volcanic island like other islands. Other than there, these we have a lot of islands like uh, Seychelles and Mauritius and Chagos, uh, Lakshadweep. All these islands are volcanic in nature but the thing is they are slowly got transformed into coral islands because of accumulation of corals. Previously in my notes I have given about corals. You can take a look at that. So other important islands are islands in islands in Central Pacific, which are called as uh, Polynesia, Melanesia, and then various other islands. There are a group of chain of islands, and Fiji is one important island, uh, which is important for Indian diaspora per perspective. So all these islands are volcanic islands, which were later became as coral islands because of accumulation of corals. So we'll see about coral formation, coral bridging in later parts of the section in oceanography. And other than this, we have Hawaiian Islands in northern uh, Central Pacific. So Hawaiian Islands are formed due to much different kind of form, uh, processes, which is called as hotspot volcanism, about which I'll be explaining in the next videos. And then we have the formation of Japanese Islands due to interaction between North American Pacific, sorry, Pacific, Eurasian and Philippine Plate. And then we have Philippine Islands, which is due to the interaction between Philippine Plate and Eurasian Plate. And then we have the formation of Indonesian islands due to Indo-Australian and Eurasian plate interactions. With this we have the, the formation of what we call as East African Rift Valley and the Great Rift System which was formed due to interaction between Somalian minor, minor plate and Nubian plate which is also called as African Continental Plate and also the Arabian plate. And then we have uh, the interaction between a small plate called as Kazakhstanian plate and then uh, Eurasian plate which gave rise to Urals. So and again we have Central Asian mountains, for example mountains like Atalai mountains and then uh, <coughs> we have Kunlun Shan and Tayan Shan etc. All these kind of some mountains were formed due to interaction between continental plates and they are very old fold mountains so and again they are not important for us, I, I don't think they are so important when it comes to formation because they are just very similar to the formation of Urals where uh, the interaction between various continental plates, smaller continental plates gave rise to these mountains. But the major ones are Rockies Indies, about which we have studied in detail. So this is the end. So thanks for watching. If you liked my videos, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, you can share my videos, which will be helpful for other students as well. And thanks for watching. Take a look at my website, from which you can get all the text files with about the links I have.